hello everyone in this video we will go through the some of the common program which you will come across the real world application so in every video i have provided the problem statement and the different type of solution but i will still suggest you that once you read the problem statement then you pause the video and do the coding at your end once you complete the program then you can start the video again and then you can compare the solution remember that the practice will make you better so let's go ahead and let's deep dive into the programming that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to check that string is palindrome string or not so palindrome strings are those strings whom you read from left to right or right to left give the same value for example if i say the string is madam so if you read the string from left to right or from right to left you are still getting the same string as madam for example if i say another word like did or we have the word like level so in this program we will see that the given string is palindrome or not so let's go wait so let me create a function i will say define check palindrome now i will send the string as input here so as we have learned earlier that using the range function it is possible to reverse the string using the pass minus 1 as step function so we can say something like str1 equal to str minus 1 here basically the str1 will be the reverse of string so we can simply compare if str equal to str1 then we can say return true because if the reverse of the string is true then we get the palindrome string else return false now let me create one uh, string here i will say input equal to madam now i will say if in palindrome and i will pass the input string here print string each palindrome else we will say in not palindrome Now let's go ahead and let me run the program. So you can see here, I'm getting the string in palindrome. Now let me change the string. I will say Python. Now let me run the program. you can see here we're getting the output that string is not palindrome because python is not a palindrome string now let me change this to something level you can see here the output is string is palindrome so you can see here we have implemented the palindrome program using the range function but there is one more approach to reverse the string so now let's go ahead and see what is the second approach for this let's so let me create one additional program let me copy this code so in the second approach we can use a iterator so basically in the string class we have the function which reverse the string so instead of saying is str1 equal to str str we can say something like we will join the iterator with the empty string and we will say dot join 
and then basically we will use the reverse function here and we will pass the str let me print the str1 here now let me run the program we can see here we, we are getting the same output the string is palindrome and we are getting the str1 at level now let me change input to python again now let me run the program you can see here we are getting the reverse st string for the python and we are getting the output string is not palindrome so this is the second method by which we can see the string is palindrome or not now we have one more way the, the third way now let's go wait and see what is the third way to check the string is palindrome or not let me create one more program now let me copy this code see if i need to check that the word is palindrome or not basically what we are doing here we are checking that this first character it same as the character at the last character or not and similarly the second character a it similar as second last character or not so basically we are comparing the first half of a string with the second half of the string so we can compare the character by character like we will compare the first character with the last character then second character with the second last character and even if the one of the character is not matching then the, the string is not the palindrome so we can say something like for character in basically now we will use the range function and basically we run the loop for the half of the length of the string and remember one thing the the length of string can be the odd number like 5 so basically we will run the loop till the 2 so we will say length and then we will pass the string here to let me change the variable into index because this is basically a index so basically now index will run from the 0 to 2 because in this scenario the index will run from 0 to 1 so we will say if character at the index position so now basically we are comparing the string character by character so we are comparing the first character not equal to the sec the last character so we will say str length of str minus 1 and then we do minus the index so for the zeroth element the index will be zero so now let's go wait and understand what exactly this means so basically now when the index is zero then this become four because the length of string is five here and five minus one equal to four and index is zero so basically now we are comparing the element at zero position with the element at the fourth position now when the index become one this become 3 so basically in this scenario we say we are comparing the a at this position with the a at this position so in any other scenario if the value will not match we will return false so we will say return false so suppose in all the scenario when the character got match it means that this is the palindrome string so at the end of the function we will say return true so remember one thing we are not passing the return true inside the all loop or if statement this return true will be at the end of the function so in any other scenario if you are finding that the character is not matching we will return the false but if all the character got match then this for loop will be terminate and at the end we will return the true statement now let me run the program so as i mentioned earlier we had to convert this into the integer because we cannot run the range on the float so now let me run the program 
we can see here we are getting the output that the string is palindrome now let me change the string now let me run the program so you can see here we are again getting the correct output so in this video we have seen three different ways to find the string is the palindrome or not so remember the python has already provided the inbuilt function to reverse the string so this is the shortest method but i had told you the two different methods so you can understand how the reverse can be implement in the different ways so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to generate the first and fibonacci numbers so the first question will be what are the fibonacci numbers so the fibonacci numbers are those numbers in which the element at the end position it basically is sum of the element at the end minus one and the end minus two position so for example if i say the series start from one and one then the third element will be the sum of the, the previous two elements the and the third element become two here now in this scenario the fourth element will be sum of these elements so the fourth element will be three here and similarly the fifth element will be sum of two and three so this become five and then eight and thirteen and go down so let's go ahead and see how to generate the fibonacci numbers here so let me create a function generate Fibonacci and I will pass the number count so suppose if I want to generate the 10 Fibonacci number then we will pass the 10 as the input argument to this function late here let me say first number equal to 0 and second number equal to 1 now suppose if someone it sending the, as the negative number then you will simply say if number less than one then we will simply return from the program now else what we will do we will basically run the loop here so we will say for i in range number so basically we will run the loop for n number of times and now here basically we will print the second number here so we will say print second number and now basically we will create the third number by adding this adding the first number and the second number so we will say third number equal to first number plus second number so now we will simply put the second number value into the first number and the third number value into the second number so we will say first number equal to second number and then the second number equal to third number now let me call this function suppose i want to generate the first 10 number in the fibonacci so i will simply say generate fibonacci numbers 10 now let me run the program so you can see here we are able to generate the 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 fibonacci numbers here so now coming back to the these two lines of the program so as you can see here the initially the values were first number was 0 and 1 so now in the second loop i want to assign the first number as 1 and the second number also as 1 so we move the value by one level so in the second loop the first number will be assigned with the one and the second number will be assigned with the two and move so on so basically we are saving the last two numbers in the first number and the second number so hopefully you guys have got the basic understanding of how to create the end fibonacci numbers so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to find the largest number from the list so suppose if we are the list 
and remember we had to do that without using the max function available in the list class so suppose now if i a equal to 10 45 67 100 14 15 60 so as you have already know that we have the max function available so i can simply say print max a now let me run the program you can see here we are getting the correct output here but in this video we will see how to do that without using the max function so for that basically we will iterate through the complete list and then we will check the each and every element so initially suppose we will say the max equal to the first element of the list so i will say max equal to a0 so basically we are saying let's suppose the max is the first element of the list now we will run the loop so we will say for data in and now we will go through the list one by one element and now basically we will start from the second position so we will say range 2 length of the list so basically we have already said that max equal to a of 0 so we don't want to again compare the first element so we are starting from the second element of the list and now we will say if max each less than a of the data because data is basically the index here so we will say max equal to a of the data So now let me print the output here. So I will just print max here. Now let me run the program. So you can see here we are getting the correct output here. So basically, what we have done here that basically we have compared the each each and every element with the max. So initially the max was ten. Now suppose in the first loop we compare the ten with the forty five. So forty five was Greater than max, so we assign max with the forty-five. Now coming back to the next position, the sixty-seven. The sixty-seven was greater than forty-five, so we assign the max with the sixty-seven. And simply in the next loop, the hundred was greater than sixty-seven, so we assign max with the sixty-seven. But the remaining element, these elements were not greater than max, so we didn't change the max value. And at the end, we pin the max value. So now let me add one more element at the end of the list. Now let me run the program. You can see here we are getting the correct output again. So in this program we have used the range function where we use the start and end value, and then we compare each and every element of the list with the max number. That's all in this video. thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to calculate the number of digits in a number so suppose if i have number equal to 3 4 5 5 then basically i want to print the 12 because the 3 plus 4 equal to 5 equal to 12 similarly suppose if the number is 9 5 6 6 then i want to print the 20 because the 9 plus 5 plus 6 equal to 20 here what we will do basically here that we will run the loop on this number and in every loop we will divide the number by 10 and we will find at the same time we will find the modulo by 10 so in the first time when we will do the modulo operator when we say 956 modulo 10 we will get the first number as 6 here and then in the same time basically we will divide this number by 10 so basically we have the number remaining is 95 and in the next loop we will again find the modulo 10 and then we will basically get it 5 here and we will add this 5 into the 6 so now the sum is 11 and the number remaining is 9 So now again, when we will use the modulo operator nine, we will get nine 
add the output we will add 9 into the 11 so the output is 20 and now when we will divide this number by 10 we will get the integer part at 0 so now we will terminate the program so basically we have to run the loop on the number until the number becomes 0 so and in each and every loop we will find the modulo we will add that modulo into the sum and the same time basically we will divide the number by 10 so let's go wide and then like write the program so we will say define calculate sum now let me pass the number here and now let me initialize the sum equal to 0 now I will say while number is greater than 0 we will basically use the modulo operator so we will say modulo equal to number percentage operation 10 now we will sum this with the modulo so we say sum equal to sum plus modulo and at the same time we will divide the number by 10 so we will say number divided by number 10 but remember one thing we only take the part the integer part so we will apply the integer operation here we are not interested in, into the float part so that's all here now let me call this function so suppose i size a number equal to 456 let me call the function calculate sum let me return the sum here i will say print calculate sum then i will pass the number now let me run the program so you can see here we are getting the output at 15 because the 4 plus 5 plus 6 is the 15 here now suppose if i pass the number age 834 then the output should be 15 again let me run the program so we are again getting the 15 here now let me pass some bigger number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 so the output here should be 45 You can see here we are getting the correct output here. Hello everyone. In this video, we will generate the multiplication table. So basically from the function, we will pass the number for which we want to generate the table. Create a function, we will define multiplication table. And let me pass the number here. Now I will say for i in range. So basically we will generate the 10 rows in the multiplication table. So we will say 10 here. Now I will say print. So basically we will print something like number into 1 equal to 8, number into 2 equal to 16, something like that. So we will say, so basically we will do the format function to print the number so i will say here into now you let me use the format function and now let me pass the values here so first will be the num second will be i plus one so remember we had to do the i plus 1 here because in function return the value from 0 to n minus 1 and not from the 1 to n and at the end we will say num i plus 1 so basically we do the multiplication here now let me call this function here so if i want to print the table of a so i will say 
multiplication table of 8 here. Now let me run the program. So you can see here, we are able to generate the multiplication table here. And if you want to switch the order, you can simply say num here. Now let me run the program. We are able to change the order. Now the one, two, three at the beginning of the string. So in this video, we have created the multiplication table using the range function and the for loop. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to calculate the GCD of all the elements present in the list. In the past video, we have already seen that using the GCD function available in the math library, we can simply find the GCD of two numbers. So suppose if I want to find the GCD of two numbers, I can simply say a equal to 10, b equal to 8. Now I first need to import the math library here. I will say import math. Now I will say print math.gcd. I will pass the a and b here. Now let me run the program. We can see here we are getting the output at 2. So this, so this means that the 2 is the largest number by which both the numbers A and B are divisible. But in our program we need to find the GCD of all the elements present in the list. So now remember one thing. If I need to find the GCD of three elements A, B, C then we can first find the gcd of a and b if the gcd of a and b is x then we can simply find the gcd of a b and c by simply find the gcd of c and x so we will use the similar logic here so let me create a function i will say define gcd list Now let me pass the list as the argument here. So first basically we will find the GCD of first two number. So remember we will say GCD equal to mac dot GCD. We will say pass list zero and this one is argument. Now once we have got the GCD of first two elements, now we can simply run the loop from the third element to the n element. So we can simply say for index in range 2 to length of the list. And now we will say GCD equal to math dot GCD. And remember one thing, we will pass the GCD as the first in argument here and the second argument will be the element at the index position. And at the end, we will return the GCD. Now let me create one list here. Now I will say list has the element like 12, 18, 30, 96, 84, 72 you can see here all the elements are here divisible by 6 so now if I say print GCD list and I will pass the list as the argument now let me run the program okay so you can see here we are getting the correct output here at 6 hello everyone in this video, we will see how to calculate the LCM of all the elements present in the list. So in the previous video, we have already seen how to generate the LCM of two numbers. For that, we have to use the math library. But remember one thing, if I say the LCM of A and B, then we can simply find it using a into B 
and then divide the by BCD of A and B. So suppose LCM of A and B H X and now suppose if I want to find the LCM of A B C E. B and C, then I can simply say we have to find the X into C and then we have to divide this with the GCD of X and C. So basically, we have to keep finding the LCM of previous all the numbers and the new number. So let's go ahead and implement this logic to calculate the LCM of the list. So let me create a program and before that let me import the library to calculate the GCD of two numbers. So I would say import math. So I will say define calculate LCM and now let me pass the list as a argument here. So first we will find the LCM of first two numbers. So we will say LCM equal to list zero into list one. Now let me divide it with the math dot GCD and I will say list zero and the list one. And now remember one thing, we had to convert this into the integer because the division operation is an already float, but we want to store the LCM as integer. So now once we got the LCM of first two number, now we can run the loop from the third element to the nth element of the list. So we will say for index in range two to length of the list and now we will say lcm equal to basically we will do the multiplication of the lcm into list index the element at the index element and we will divide this this with the gcd of the lcm and list index and again we will convert this into the integer. And at the end, we will return the LCM. Now, let me create a list here. I will say list equal to 12, 18, 30, 72, 42. And now let me try to get the LCM. I will say print calculate LCM and I will pass the list as the argument. Now let me run this program. You can see here we are getting the output at 2520. So you can see here by using the GCD method and the range function it is possible to calculate the LCM of the complete list. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to reverse the list without using the range operation or the reverse function. So we already know if we pass the minus one into the range function, then we get the list in the reverse order. But suppose we don't want to use that function and we want to create our own function, then in this video we will see how to do that. So suppose if I have the list like 4, 8, 9, 20, 25, then I want to output like 25, 20, 9, 8 and 4. So basically in this video we will do the iteration on the list till the half of the side so basically we will do the iteration till 4 and 8 and then what we will basically do we will exchange the value of 4 with the 25 and then similarly we will 
reverse the value of 8 with the 20. Now, if you can see here in this scenario, the array length is pi. So we don't have to do the exchange of value 9. But suppose if we have one more element here, 8, then in this scenario, we will exchange the value 9 with the 8. So basically, we first we will exchange 4 and 25, then we will exchange 8 and 20. And at the end, we will exchange the number 9 with the 8. Now, let's go ahead and see how to do that. Basically, we will create a function here, reverse list. Let me pass the list here. Now, I will say for index in, we will use the range function. And then we will say length of list because we had to run the loop till the half of the list. So we will say length of list divide by 2. And remember, we had to convert this into the integer because division function always written the float. So we will say integer here. Let me print the list here again. 2, 3, 6, 7, 9. So basically, we had to exchange this element with the this element. So basically, I will create one temporary variable here, temp. I will say temp equal to list index. So in the first loop, the index equal to 0 here. So we will say temp equal to list index. And now we will basically assign the value at the list index position with the element at the this position. So we will say list length of list minus one and then minus index. So this statement now assign the element two with the nine, but now we have to assign this nine with the two also. So we will say list and then basically we will assign this with the temp. So we will say temp here. So basically we are exchanging the two variables using the one third variable here. So now let me return the list as output. Now let me create a list here. 14, 45, 67, 90, 89. Now I will say list equal to reverse list list. Now let's go ahead and print the element from the, from the list. So we'll say print list here. Now let me run the program. So you can see here, we are able to reverse the list using the swapping of the element. Now let me change the list and let me add one more element and let's see is it working fine for the even number of elements. So I will add one more element 78. So you can see here it is even working for the even number of elements. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to remove the characters from the string which are at the odd position. So suppose if you have the string equal to A, B, C, D, E, and F, and basically I want to remove all the characters which are at the position A, C, and D. So basically I want to get the string B, D, and F. So one of the shortest way is to use the range function. So we can simply say str equal to so str and then we will pass 1 because we want to start the string from the 1 here and then we will pass the 2 as a stay function because we want to, to remove the alternate character now if I say print str now let me run the program 
you can see here we are getting the output b d f so basically we remove all the character like a c and e which are at the out position now let's go ahead and see what are the alternative way we can do that so in the alternative way we can do the for loop you now first let me comment this code and we will say output equal to empty string so we will now we will say for index in range we will pass the length of the string here so we don't want to read any character whose index is at the even position so we will say if index mod 2 did not equal to 0 then we will append output with the character at the position so we will say str index now let me print the output here now let me run the program so you can see here we are getting the same output within the for loop now let me change the string here i will say something like h y t f or now let me run the program you can see here we remove all the character like h t e and all those so in this video we have seen how to remove the or characters using the range function and as well as the for loop that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to calculate the occurrence of a element in the list so suppose if we have a list x now we have the element like 1 4 2 3 4 3 3 4 3 2 1 so now suppose if i want to know that how many time number 3 had been present in the list then one of the easiest option to use the count function available in the list class we can simply say print x dot count 3 now let me run the program you can see here we are getting the output at 4 because number 3 present four times in the list but in this video we will see how to create our own function to calculate the occurrence of element so let's go ahead and comment this line now we will create a function define calculate occurrence and we will pass the list and the item as a input now we will say for data in list so basically we will do the iterator here and we will compare each and every element of the list so we will say data in list if data equal to equal to item and basically we will increase the counter so let me first initialize the counter as 0 so i will say count equal to 0 and here we will say count plus equal to 1 now at the end let me return the count now let me call our own function i will say print calculate occurrence i will pass the list as x and i will pass the item at 3 here now let me run the program you can see here we are getting the same output at 4 now if i change the data to 6 which is not present in the list then i will get the output at 0 you can see here so in this video we have seen that we can use the predefined function count which is available in the list or if you want to create your own function where you want to implement some additional logic 
then you can then you can use the for loop to do the iteration on the list and then find the count so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to find out the nth largest element in the list so suppose if you have the list like x equal to 45 67 12 100 13 as you can see here in this list, the 100 is the largest element and then the 61 is the second largest element. So suppose if I want to find out the second largest element, then this function should return the 67. And if I say I want to find the third largest element, then I should get the output as 45. And remember one thing, if person pass the 1, then we will see in the largest element 100. So let's go ahead and see how to implement that. So basically, we will create one function here define largest n now in this we will pass the list and we will say number so basically number is basically the which n largest number you want to find out so let's go away so first thing we have to do is basically this sort this array in ascending order so we will say x dot sort now when we sort this array, if you then basically the 100 will go at the last position. So basically now we have to do the reverse of the array so that the 100 should come at the first position. So we will do something like x equal to x minus minus 1. So basically we will use the range function and we will pass the minus 1 as a stay function to reverse the array. So now suppose if you want to get the second largest number then the value of number is the 2 but remember the second largest number in the list is at the index 1 so we will say here return list number minus 1 now let's go wait and see how this will work now i will call this function print largest n I will pass the list x and I will say send me the second largest number. Now let me run the program. Let me replace this x with this list. Now let me run the program. So you can see here we are getting the correct output. So that is 67. It is second largest element in the list. Now if I try to get the third largest element. Now let me pass 3. So that's so the third largest element is 45. Now let me run the program. So you can see here, we are getting the correct output again. So in this video, we have seen how to calculate the nth largest element in the list. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to remove the duplicate elements from the list. So suppose if I have the list x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 1, 5, 6, 4, 7. So you can see here we have many duplicate elements in this list like 1, 4 and 2. So in this video, we will see how to remove the duplicate elements from the list. So let's go ahead and create a function define remove duplicate and I will pass the list as input so what we will do basically here that we will first convert this list into the sets because as because as soon as we create the set from this list the set will contain only the unique element from the list it will remove all the duplicate element and after that we will again convert this set into the list and we will return this list back to the calling function so let's go away so we will say here set object equal to we will create the set from the input now let me go and print the set object let me call this function i will say remove duplicate i will pass x as input 
now let me run this program so you can see here we are able to create the set here which is all the unique elements so basically we are remove the duplicate four two and one now we will convert this back to the list and we will return this back to the function so now we will convert this set back to the list so we will say return list and we will pass set object as the input and now we will say x equal to remove duplicate x now let me print the x here now let me run this program you can see here this is the list object so basically we have removed all the duplicate elements from the list by converting the list first into the set and then converting this set back to the list so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to generate the inverted star so let's first understand what is the inverted star here so suppose something like star 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 and then basically we will put one space and three star i will put the two spaces and then two star then I will put the three spaces, then the one star. You can see here, so basically we have created the inverted star of size 4 because we have the 4 star maximum. So suppose if you want to create a program where the person will enter that how many rows he wants in the inverted star. So let's go ahead and see how to create this program. So I will say define generate star I will pass the number num now let me print the star again so we can see here in the first row we have the four star and we have the zero spaces and in the second row we have the one space and the three star. So basically, we can run the loop. We can say for i in range num because we have to generate the n number approach. And we will say something like print. So if you see here, first we are printing the spaces. So I will say i into spaces basically we are using the multiplication operator here so so if you remember in the string section i mentioned that the string type support the multiplication operator which print the string n number of time so here i am saying print the string which has one space i number of time and then append this with the num minus i and then print this to start so I will say a string which has the start basically what we are trying to say that print a space for the i number of times and print a star for the num minus i number of times so in the first row we are printing the i for zero times and we are printing the star for the four times now let's go wait and let me call the function I will say generate star I will say wait 10 let's go wait so you can see here we are able to generate the star which has 10 rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so in this video we have seen how to use the range function and the string multiplication operator to generate the inverted star that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to create a program which will check that the number is armstrong number or not so the first question is what is the armstrong number so the armstrong number is the number in which the sum of cube of all the digits is equal to the, the same number 
then the number is called the ohm sum number so let's go away to suppose if i have the number like 153 and if i say 3 into 3 to 3 so basically we are finding the cube of all the digits so we say 3 into 3 into 3 3 then 5 into 5 into 5 Plus one into one into one. This is equal to one fifty three. So in this number, the sum of cube of all digit is equal to the number. So let's go away and see how to create a program which will check the number is Armstrong number or not. Basically, we will use the modulo operator continuously to get the number at the unit place. And then we will keep dividing the number by ten. So we let's create a program. So let's go away and create a function here. I will say define big Armstrong. Let me pass number. Now I will say sum equal to zero here. And I will say while num is greater than zero. we will basically use the modulo operator here i will say unit equal to num modulo operator 10 and then we will say sum equal to sum plus unit and then we will use the exponential operator the two multiplication sign and three so basically we are saying those basically we are finding the cube of the number at the unit place and then we are adding into the sum at the same time we will divide the number by 10 num equal to num divide by 10 and then we will convert this into the integer and now basically we will check the sum if sum equal to equal to num so before that let's go over and save me this number to some other number so i will say x equal to num because we are keep dividing the number with the tan so i will say if sum equal to equal to x then we will return true the number is armstrong number else we will return false now let me say the number equal to 153 and i say if if i'm strong number print number h um strong number else we will say number not um strong number Now let me run this program. We can see here we are getting the output number is Armstrong number. Let me change the value to one fifty two. Now let me run this. You can see here now we are getting the output. The number is not Armstrong number. So basically, in this video, we were keep dividing the number by ten, and at the same time, we were finding the number present at the unit place, and then basically we were calculating the cube of the number by using the exponential operator, and then we were adding the the cube into the sum, and at the end, we simply just check that the sum is equal to the original number or not. So if the number is equal to the sum, then we say the number is Armstrong number, as the number is not the Armstrong number. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone.
Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to remove the end occurrence of element from the list. So suppose if I have the list x equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 6, 7, 4, 2 and 3. Now suppose if I say I want to remove the second occurrence of the element 4. Basically I want to remove this element from the list. So I want the output something like this one. So basically we have removed the second occurrence of the element 4. So you can see here the list has element 4 three times. 1, 2, 3. But we want to remove the second occurrence. So let's go ahead and see how to implement this using the function. Let's go ahead. So I will say I will create a function here define remove element and I will basically pass the list and I will pass the which element we want to verify so I will say item and I also I will say the occurrence number so I will say occurrence now let's go away so basically what we will do we will first count the number of element this item is present in the list so we'll keep a count counter I will say count equal to zero now we will run through the complete list so I will say for i in range length of the list and here basically we will check that the element at the i position if list of i equal to equal to item then basically we will increase the count by one so basically we have found this item into the list so i will increase the count here now once we increase the count we will see if this count is matching with the occurrence which we are looking for so we will say if count equal to equal to occurrence and we will basically pop the element from the list so we will say list dot pop and we will pass the index i here and the same time we will return the list And remember one thing, it is possible that we will not find the occurrence in the element. So we will still say pass the list at the end. So we will say return list. Now let's go wait. And let me say x equal to remove element x. So let me remove the element 4 and the occurrence 2. And now let me print the x here. Now let me run this program. So you can see here, we have removed the second occurrence of the four. You can see here, after five, we directly had the six here. Now if I say remove the eight from the list, now let me run this program. You can see here we are getting the complete list again because there is no element 8 present in the list. And similarly, suppose if I say 7 and 2, let me run this program. So again, I'm getting the complete list because even though the 7 is present, but we don't have the 7 two times. Now if I say 7, 1 here, now let me run this program. So, so you can see here, we have removed the first occurrence of the 7 from the list. So in this video, we basically keep the counter of the occurrence of the element. And once we found the end occurrence of the element, we 
remove the then basically we use the pop function to remove the specific element from the list and then we return the list back to the calling function so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to rotate the list the first question is what is the rotation of the list so suppose if i have the list x equal to 1 2 3 4 5 now basically i want to create a list which will basically rotate the element by one position so i want to do something like 5 1 2 3 and 4 so let's go ahead and see how to achieve this so first basically you will create a function let me go ahead and say define rotate list i will pass the list as the argument here basically what we will do they will first we will remove this element from the list phi and then basically we will add this element to the first position of the list so the first question will be how to remove the element from the list so basically we will use the pop function now in the pop function basically we have to provide the index of the element which we want to remove so we will say y equal to list dot pop and we will basically provide the index so we will say length list minus one because the length of list written as the phi but we want to remove the fourth element because index start from zero and also remember one thing the pop function written as the value which was removed from the list so now let's go ahead and let me print the value of y so i will say print y and let me call this function rotate list x now let me run this program so you can see here i'm getting the output phi because this pop function remove the element phi from the list and the same time if i try to print the value of x so you can see here now we have the list which are the element like one two three four and at the same time we have the element which was removed from the list so now basically we want to insert this element at the first position of the list so for that we have already seen that how to achieve that so basically we have to create the imaginary position in the list so we can say something like let me print the list here not the x so remember one thing here we have passed the x by reference that's why any change in the list is affecting the x also. So now we will say list zero or colon zero. So basically this is referring to the first element in the list and then we will pass a list with y as element. Now let me go ahead and print the list here. let me run this program so now you can see here we are able to add the element phi at the first element in the list now let me remove all this print statement now let me return this list And here we will say x equal to rotate list. Now let's run the program. Before that, let me print the x here. You can see here we are able to rotate the list. Now, if I again say x equal to rotate list, so basically we will rotate the element by two position. Now let me run this program. We can see here 4, 5 is here and 1, 2, 3 are here. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to find the median of the list. Before we proceed for the implementation, let's understand what is the median. So median is basically the element which is present at the center of the list when we sort the array or list. So suppose if you have the numbers like 3, 5, 
and 40. Now if you arrange this number in ascending order, then we will get something like 3, 5, 6, 30, 40, 45, and the 90. In this scenario, the median will be 30 because the 30 is at the middle of the list. So in case of the odd number of the element in the list, the median will be the element which is at the middle of the list. But in case of the even number of the element in the list, the median will be the average of the middle two elements. So let's go away and see how to calculate the median now. So I will say define median and I will pass the list here as input. Well, now let me say x equal to 10, 15, 4, 18, 30, 150. So first we what we will do first we will basically sort the list. So we will say input dot sort. So let's go ahead and let me print the sorted array. Now I will say median. Now let me run the program. So you can see here we are able to sort the list. Now if you see here the 18 is at the middle of the list. So now we will first check the length of the list. So what we will say if length of input mod 2 equal to equal to 1 so basically we are here saying that if the list has the odd number of element then we have to return the element which is present in the middle of the list so we will say return input length of input divided by 2. So now let me say output equal to median of x on n and let me now print the output here. Now let me run this program. So you can see here we are getting the correct output because 18 is at the middle of the list. But Till now we have handled if the length each odd number. Now let's go ahead and implement what if the list contain the even number of elements. Now I will say else. Now let me add this number here. I will say 40 here. Then in this scenario we have to sum the sum of the element which are at the index 3 and 4. So we will say return and then we will sum here we will say minus 1 here and then we have to divide by 2. So basically we have to find the average of the two numbers. Now let's go ahead and let me run this program. Now let me print this array again. I will just print input. So you can see here we have the two number 18 and 30 at the middle of the list and basically we are finding the average of these two numbers. So the 30 plus 18 is 48 and the average will be 24. Now let me remove this print statement. So you can see here in this program we have implemented to calculate the median. So in case if the list contains the odd number of element then we are returning the element which is present at the middle of the list. But if list contains the even number of element then basically we are finding the 
average of two number which are present at the middle of the list so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to reverse the number so in this program we will see two different approaches to reverse the number so let's go ahead and see what is the first approach so suppose if i have a number like num equal to one two three four now i want the output at four three two one so let's go and let me create a function define reverse number and i will pass the number input here so in the first approach we will basically convert this integer into the string object and then basically we will use the range function to reverse the string by passing the step value as minus 1 so once we get the reverse string we will basically again convert the string into the integer using the type casting so let's go away so let me say string equal to input and basically we will do the type casting here so i will say str now let me reverse the string i will say string equal to string minus one now let me print the string here now let me call this function now let's go ahead and run this program so i think we have the problem here let me pass the num here now let me run the program you can see here we are able to reverse the string here but before returning this we have to convert it back into the integer so we will say return integer and we will say string here and then we will say num equal to reverse number now let me print the num here let me run this program you can see here we are able to reverse the number so if i change the number here now let me run the program you can see here we are able to reverse the number so basically in this method we change the number into the string then we reverse the string and then again we converted the string back to the integer now let's go ahead and see the second approach so let me copy this code let me create a separate file So in the second approach, we will basically run the while loop on the number and we will keep dividing the number by 10 and we will keep getting the number present at the unit place using the modulo operator. So let's suppose if I have the number like 5, 6, 7, then we will basically first get this 7 and we will get the and we will basically divide the number by 10 and then we will get the number at 56. So the next time whenever we will say the modulo operator on this 56 by 10 we will get the 6 then what we will do we will multiply this number by 10 and add 6 there so basically we will get something like 70 plus 6 equal to 76 and the same time we will divide this number by 10 so we will get the 5 now again we will run the modulo operation on this number 5 and this time we will get the 5 so again we will multiply this number with 10 and add this number so we will say 76 into 10 plus 5 so we will get 765 and at the same time we will divide this number 5 by 10 and we will get the output at 0 so basically we will terminate the loop and you can see here by this logic we will get the number 765.
So let's go ahead and implement the while loop. So we will say, first let me initialize the output. So I'll say output equal to zero. Now while input greater than zero, basically we will find the remainder equal to input divided by 10. And as I mentioned, we will say output equal to output into 10 plus remainder and at the same time we will divide the input by 10 input equal to input divide by 10 but remember we have to convert this into the integer and at the end we will return the output now let me remove the statement. Now let's go wait and let me run this program. You can see here we are getting the correct output. Now let me change the number. Now let me run the program again. So you can see here we are again getting the correct output. So you can see here in this second approach you basically run the while loop until the input was greater than zero and we keep dividing the number and keep getting the modulo to reverse the number. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how to create a program which basically take the list as the input and return the two lists as output in which one list contain all the odd element in the list and the second list contain all the event numbers in the list. So let's go ahead and see how to implement that. So suppose if I add the list x equal to 12, 13, 9, 10, 7. So basically I want the output in which one list contain all the even numbers from the list. So I will say something like 12, 10, and another list contain all the elements like 13, 9, and 7. And these are the odd numbers. So let's go ahead and see how to implement this. So let me read a function odd even. And let me pass the list at the input. Now let me create an empty list odd number equal to empty list and the same time we'll create the list with the even number which is also the empty so what we will do we will basically now run the loop on the list and we will see the numbers are even or odd if the number is even then we will add the number into the even number list and similarly if the number is odd then we will add a number into the odd number list so let's go ahead so i will say for data in list if data modulo 2 equal to equal to 0 so basically we are seeing if the number is even number because we, because we are dividing the number by 2 and if the remainder is zero, so the basically the number is the even number, then you will say even number dot append and we will pass the data here. So basically we are adding the element data into the even number list. Else we will put this number in the odd number list. And at the end, we will return both the list. So we will say return odd number, even number. And similarly here we will say even odd. Let me change the order because we're changing the odd first. Odd even equal to odd even and let me pass the x, x argument now let me print 
odd here and let me print the even now let me run the program so you can see here we are getting the error the name even is not defined because we are passing the colon here instead of comma so let me change the colon to comma comma here now let me run the program you can see here we are able to generate the even number and the odd number list here so let me add one more element here i will say 18 here now let me run the program you can see here now we are able to see the number 18 in the even list so in this program we basically use the append function available in the list class to add the element in the list and the same time we basically use the feature to return the multiple output from the function so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to find the factors of a number so suppose if i say the number is 48 then this number has factors like 1 2 3 4 6 8 12 24 and 48 so in this program we will see how to find all these numbers so to find all these factor, basically we will run the for loop and we will basically keep increasing the value of the counter by one and then we will basically divide the number with the counter and see the modulo is zero or not. But what very, very important thing that we will not run this loop till the number. We will basically find the square root of the number and then we will run the loop till then so for in this scenario we will run the loop till the value 6 because if you can see here if the number is divisible by 1 then we can give the another value like 48 and similarly if the number is divisible by 2 then we can easily get the 24 by dividing this number by 2 and similarly if the number is divisible by 4 then the number is divisible by 12 also let me add 16 here also so we don't have to run the loop till the n, but we have to run the loop till the square root of n. So let's go ahead. Let me say define factors n. Now let me run the loop. I will say for i in range. And remember one thing, we have to start the loop from 1 and not from 0. So I will say 1 here. And then I will say, and I will basically find the square root of number using the exponential operator. Now we have to convert this into the integer because we cannot run the loop using the float number. And then basically we had to add plus one because we are starting the loop from the one and not from zero and now we will say if n modulo operator i equal to equal to zero so basically i am saying if the number is divisible by i then we have to add this into our list so let me create a empty list here i will say output equal to empty list of the number is divisible then we will basically append this number into our list so output dot append we will add this number i and at the same time we will append the number and we at the same time we will add the number and divide by i let me convert this into integer At the end, we will return the output. Now let's go ahead and say number equal to 48. 
print factors you will pass the number as argument now let me run the program so you can see here we are getting the correct output we are getting all the factors but there is one problem in this program so let's see what will happen if the number is perfect square so if i say number equal to 36 now let me go away and run the program so you can see here we are getting the two six in this list because this is the perfect square so in case of perfect square we should not add this number twice in the list so we can check something here if i did not equal to and into a then and then only we will add this number now let's go away and see the output so now you can see here we are getting the correct output we don't have the six edge duplicate item in the list so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to create a program which will randomly select a card from the deck of the cards so let's go away so basically first we will import the random library here so we will say import random now let me create a function if find random card now in this function basically we will define two lists one is the the list of the card number so we will say card numbers equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then we have the jack queen and king now we will create a separate array for the suit type so we will say suit equal to art diamond club and the speed so now we will basically select one random card from this card number so we will say card equal to random dot rain int and now we will basically say 0 to 12 because we want to generate the number between 0 to 12 because for this card number the index is from 0 to 12 and similarly we will say select suit equal to random dot random from 0 to 3. Now basically we will return a string. So basically we want to return something like two of diamond, queen of spade or king of heart and all those. So basically we are sending two values back to the calling function now we will do the format function here and the values will be card numbers and we will pass the card here and the second will be suit and we will put the select suit as index now let us go ahead and call this function we will say random card let me put it in the statement now let me run this program so you can see here we are getting the king of speed now let me rerun this program you can see here now we are getting 10 of heart so every time we will get the different value so in this video we have seen how to use the random library and use, how to use the rent in function to generate the card number randomly and suit randomly 
so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will basically ask user to input the three sides of the triangle and then basically we will inform the user that the triangle is possible with those sides or not and at the same time we will say that triangle is the equilateral triangle or isosceles triangle or the scalene triangle so let's go ahead and see how to implement this so before we proceed further let's first understand how we can confirm that the triangle is possible or not so suppose if the user has entered three sides like 10 12 and 20 now in this scenario the two smaller sides are 10 and 12 and would sum be 22 which is greater than third side so if any scenario if the sum of two smaller side is more than or equal to the largest side then the triangle is not possible so we cannot create a triangle like 10 12 and 25 so basically once we get the input from user we will put that input into the list and then basically we will sort the list and then basically we will sum first two element and compare that with the third element and if the sum of two elements is greater than third element then we will say the triangle is not possible so let me create a function take triangle so now we will first ask you to input the first number we will say a equal to and remember one thing we have to convert the input into the integer because input function return the string and not the integer we will say enter length of first side at the same time we will ask you to enter the second and third and let me store the third side into c Now let me create an array with the sides. Now what we will do, we will basically add this ABC in sides. So I will say sides equal to A, B and C. Now let me print the sides here. Now let me run the program. So I have to put the brackets here. And also let me apply the end operation on all the three statements. And also let me call the function. So I will say a triangle. Now let me run the program. Okay, the first size is 10, 12, 13. We can see here we have got the list with the size 10, 12, 13. So now we will sort the the list so we will simply say sites dot sort now once we sorted the array we will basically compare this so sum of first and second element with the third element so in any case if the sum of the first two element is less than third element then we will say this triangle is not possible so we will say if sites zero plus size 1 which less than or equal to size 2 then we print this triangle which not possible now let me run this program now let me say first is 10 second is 12 and third is 25 so this triangle is practically not possible you can see here we're getting the message this triangle is not possible now if, if triangle is possible then we'll check the value of a and b c so now we will check for the equilateral triangle so we will simply say elif a equal to b equal to c then print this h equilateral triangle And at the same time, we will check if 
two sides are same or not so we will say if a equal to b or b equal to c or a equal to c then we will say this is the isosceles triangle else this is the scalene triangle now let's go ahead and let me run the program let me enter all the size as same 10 10 and 10 you can see here we're getting this is the equator triangle now let me put the side 2 and 3 as same value I will say 10, 15, 15. You can see here we're getting the digital isolated triangle. In this program, basically, we first check that the, that the triangle is possible or not. And for that, basically, we first sorted the side of side in an array. And then, basically, we sum the first two sides with the third side. And if the sum is greater than third side, then the triangle is not possible. Then we check that if all the sides are same or not, and if the, all the sides are same, then this is the equator triangle. And then we check the two sides are same or not. So basically, if the A equal to B or B equal to C or the A equal to C, then this is the isosceles triangle. Else, this is the scalene triangle. So that's all in this video. Thanks to everyone. Hello, everyone. In this video, we will basically create a basic calculator which will perform the operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And then basically, we will ask user that he want to continue to perform any another operation or not. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. So let me create a function. So let's go ahead and let me create a function to find calculator. So now basically we will run this program in a while loop and basically we will keep tracking one flag and basically when the person say I don't want to continue we will set the value of the flag become false. So I will say flag equal to true. Now I will say while flag so until and unless this flag become true we will keep asking person to enter the information. Now we will print the menu option select option we will say one is for addition and similarly we will say two for subtraction three for multiplication four for division multiplication now basically we will ask person to enter the number we will say input so we will say option equal to let me convert this operation into the integer int input please enter your choice now let me run this program till now You can see here we are getting the menu option, select option, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And now we are asking person to give the option. Let's go ahead and complete the remaining program. Let me terminate the program now. So once the person will enter the option, we will ask person to provide the number. So we will say first number equal to again integer. input please enter first number and similarly we will ask for the second number now if option is one 
then we will say print sum of and equal to this so now let me use the format function i will say format i will pass the first number second number and then basically i will add the first number and second number so now let me run this program and we'll see that it is some operation working or not okay we'll say one let me enter number 10 15 you can see here we're getting the option sum of 10 and 15 equal to 25 and now we are again getting the option to enter the another option here so let me continue this program for another options so i will say elif the option is equal to 2 then in c da plus i will say minus here and i will say subtraction of multiplication and i will change this to multiplication i will change this to division So once we will show this result to the user, now we will ask the user that he want to continue or not. So now we will say continue equal to input. Do you want to continue? Press Y if you want to. continue now we will check the, the option that person has entered so we will say if continue and the same time basically we will convert this into the upper because it may be possible that person may have used the upper key and we compare this with the capital y basically in chief of now equal to equal to we will say not equal to and then basically we change the flag to false now let's go ahead and run the program okay now let me enter the choice equal to the first number 15 second number is 10 i am getting the output at 5 and at the same time asking do you want to continue okay i will say yes i in the 5 i am getting the option again let me do the multiplication i will say option 3 i will say first number is 5 second number is 6 okay so i think we are not getting because we have to change the option equal to 3 here and 4 here Auto change the wording. Now let's go away and let's run the program again. Okay, I have the option equal to three. So first number is five, second number is six. I'm getting the output at thirty. Now I will say no. I don't want to continue. Okay, so I'm out of so from program. So basically, in this program, we have. created the basic calculator which can perform the operations like plus minus multiplication and division and the user has option to continue forever or if he want he can come out from the loop so that's all in this video thanks to everyone hello everyone in this video we will see how to implement the bubble chart so first let's go ahead and understand what is the bubble chart So suppose if I have the list like x equal to twelve ninety nine hundred fifty six one seven. Now suppose if I want to sort this list, then 
one of the approach it is used the bubble saw so in the bubble saw basically we always compare the two adjacent element so what happened so first we compare the 12 with the 99 and if the number is not in the correct order then we basically swap the element so in this scenario the numbers are in the correct order now when we compare the 99 with the 100 so again the numbers are in the correct order now when we, we compare the 100 with 56 they are not in the correct order so basically we swap the element so the become area becomes something like 56 and then we have the 100 now we again compare the now we move forward and we compare 100 with the 1 and again that they are not in the correct order so we basically swap them again and we say 1 here and 100 now we move forward and now we compare 100 with the 7 again they are not in the correct order and then basically we again move forward so in this process if you see here the largest element goes to the at the end in the first iteration so in the second iteration we don't iterate to the last we basically iterate till the second last element so basically in the second iteration the 99 will go to this position and in this third iteration the 56 will go to this position so basically we have the higher loop which normally run for the n minus 1 iteration and the second loop which run basically till the n minus i iteration so let's go ahead and see how to implement the bubble sort in the python let me say define bubble sort let me pass the list as argument Let me clear list here x equal to 45 167 45 12 1 18 now i will say for i in range length of list and the same time we will run one more loop for the j we will say for j in range length of list minus 1 and minus i 